MVP or minimum viable products have become the standard for market testing. Admittedly, not so good ideas until one of them takes off. It's the equivalent of a brute forcing algorithm, but for finding success, you take an idea and create a product with just enough features that the customer can use it. And then you launch it on platforms like X, product hunt and YouTube. If the results are good, you scale and make the product better. If not, you move on to the next one until you find one that works. Rinse and repeat until you find success. In this video, I'll be going over the three main mistakes that I made while making my minimum viable product, cvranks.com, in the hopes that you can learn save time and hopefully avoid these mistakes when making your own MVP. Full disclaimer though, this is not an ad for cvranks.com. In fact, if you're watching this, I want you to know that everything on there will eventually be free. So don't go to the website and please, for the love of God, do not buy anything. In fact, the website is not even done yet. Let's just say that the Stripe API turned out to be a little bit more difficult than I imagined. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, Laz, why isn't it free now? And that's because there's still some things that I want to try out, like running Facebook and Google ads in order to gain the knowledge for my future MVPs. And I'll be sharing all of those results on this YouTube channel. So if that's something that you're interested in, make sure to subscribe. So the first mistake that I made while building cvranks.com is that I failed to pace myself. If you look at my GitHub repo history, you'll see that I actually started this project on August 5th. I worked nonstop that entire week and inevitably got burnt out when I realized the large mountain of work I still had ahead of me with zero compensation. And that led to nearly two weeks of me not touching the project at all. And when I did get back around to starting the project again, I made the exact same mistake working on it all day and then going on to not touch it for another week or so. Rinse and repeat until August was pretty much over and though I had made progress, I had very little to show for it. But that all changed when I started to pace myself in September. Instead of working on the project eight to 10 hours a day, I started to pace myself working on it only two to four hours split between 30 minute Pomodoro sessions. And though the consistency wasn't perfect, it was still much, much better. And I managed to get a lot more done than I did in the previous month, despite the fact that I was working on the back end at this time, which was a lot more difficult than the front end, especially considering that I used Mark Lau's Naval25.com as inspiration for my front end, which actually leads me to my next mistake. But before we get to that, I want to leave you with one last note, and that's that you should pace yourself according to your own situation. I work a full-time job, so working an additional eight to 10 hours after my regular eight hours of work was not sustainable. However, doing two to four hours of dev work afterwards works perfectly fine for me. So the amount of time that you spend working on the project can vary. Just make sure to pace yourself. Now, my next mistake is that I spent a long, long time planning out the way that the website is going to look rather than focusing on the product itself. Now, if your thing is designing websites and that's what you like to do, then by all means go for it. But at least for me, wasting time on the looks of the website was not worth it. Instead, I picked a website with a front end that I liked in this case, naval25.com and put my own little twist on it. And once I did that, progress really started to pick back up. Now, at the time, I still didn't learn my lesson because following that, I spent an insane amount of time trying to handle payment processing instead of committing to the Stripe API. The thing about these aspects of an MVP is that if the product wins or if you have evidence that the product is good, you can always change and improve them later on. So all that being said, don't reinvent the wheel when you're making your minimum viable product. Now for my final mistake is that in the nearly 300 commits that I made to this GitHub repository, about half of those felt like I was making no progress. And the other half had me in a state of an existential crisis, wondering why I'm spending so much time on a website that'll never see the light of day. Now, the key to fixing the latter is to actually fix your mentality. Like Steve Jobs once said, you have to trust that the dots will connect, but you can only see that they'll connect looking backwards, not forwards. And you also need to always keep in mind that yes, this product that you're making has a 90%, maybe even higher, closer to 99% chance of failing. But the knowledge and experience that you gain will put you in a much better position for your next product to succeed. In other words, always remember that you have nothing to lose by trying, but everything to gain. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.